there everybody this is 22 tiger dude here and i'm here to review brad status so brad status is written and directed by mike white and the film stars ben stiller austin abrams jenna fisher jermaine clement luke wilson and michael sheen so brad status tells the story of brad who feels like he hasn't served much purpose in his life when he notices all of his friends that he ever went to school with they are now rich or they've retired early or life in general is just going better for them than it is for him and when Brad's son Troy is getting ready for the college life Brad decided that he and Troy go on a little father-son trip to go ahead and tour all these colleges so Brad's status is a film I was incredibly excited for because I am personally a huge fan of Ben Stiller and I also really like it when Ben Stiller has these dramatic films and this year he has two of them. He has this film and he has the Meyerowitz stories which keep a lookout for that review. With Brad's status I just want this to be at least a solid movie. I really want to get behind it. This had potential to be a very solid movie at least. Unfortunately this is one of the biggest disappointments of 2017. Brad's status. Wow. Really really disappointed me. Now, of course, let's get the positives out of the way. Let's talk about Ben Stiller. Ben Stiller, we all know, is a very good dramatic actor. We, we, he's shown it already in the past. But I will definitely say this. Ben Stiller, despite how I feel about his character, and we'll get to his character later on, he gives a great performance. Seriously, this is a great performance by Ben Stiller. He really does give it his all. In terms of delivering the dialogue, I thought Ben Stiller honestly did a very good job. He was very believable. For what he needed to do to bring this character to life, he honestly did a really impressive job. And all credit goes to Ben Stiller because he really is talented and he truly does give a great performance here in Brad's status. Austin Abrams as Troy, I also thought was really good. I really liked him. He was actually very likable and he even added some nice comedic moments moments to him. He was very charming and I actually felt pretty bad for him too, which of course I'm not going to really say why, but I did feel pretty bad for him. And he's definitely a character that I just felt a lot of sympathy for. Jenna Fisher, that's right, Pam from The Office is in this film. She's adorable, she's charming. Unfortunately, not in this film that much, but when she is in this film, she is really good. She plays Brad's wife and Troy's mother, and she does a really good job for what she had to do. I wish she was definitely in the film more because her character is seriously one of the most likable characters in this film, but it was really nice to see Jenna Fisher nonetheless, and I thought she did a very good job for what she needed to do. As far as the other actors that play Troy's other friends, you know, we follow Jermaine Clement. I thought he was really good in this film. Luke Wilson, also really good in this film too. I really like seeing Luke Wilson here. And then of course, the one that Brad seems to be very intimidated by of all of his friends because he's very, very famous and successful is his friend Craig Fisher played by Michael Sheen and of course Michael Sheen we all know he's a great actor he's a very talented guy and for what he had to do in this film I thought he was really good I did really like him and I also have to give a shout out to Shazi Raja who plays one of the Harvard students I thought she was actually really good in this film and I found her character to be very interesting let's just say there's a scene between her and Brad and Brad is telling her basically everything that he thinks is wrong because Brad is a very negative person. He has a big ego. And let's just say in that one scene, she basically tells Brad off and it was amazing to see. Yeah, that's all I'm gonna really say. I just thought her character was very interesting and I really liked her. The cinematography too, I will say is very well shot. I did like the overall look of this film as far as how it is lit and all that. It was just very nice looking. I did like that. The score in this film, when it does not involve a 
basic violin, which I'll get more into my problems. Any score that does not involve the violin and Brad status, I will say I did like that score. It was very nice. Sometimes the comedy did work. There were some moments where I did laugh with this film and I thought it was actually very well executed. And there are some moments between Brad and his son that I did find to be overall very interesting. There's one moment that had me smiling and laughing and I wish there were more scenes like that in this film where Brad and his son Troy, they're having the tickle monster. Uh, and it was such a funny but also such a cute scene. I wish there were more moments like that. So there were some nice fun son moments in this film too between Brad and Troy that I did really appreciate. <sighs> But that's all I could really say as far as positives go. Mike White, he's the writer and director of this film. And as far as directing, I thought it was fine. I didn't really feel Mike White added really anything all that special when it came to direction. His direction was just... It was just kind of there, to be honest. And as far as the writing goes, I didn't think the writing was all that interesting either. I found myself pretty bored, honestly, a lot of times watching Brad's status. And the comedy too, let me just say it, it does not work for the majority of the movie. I really did not find myself laughing all that much. And my biggest problem, of course, with this film is Brad. The character of Brad. Now, I was really interested in this film because based on the trailer, yes, Brad is this guy that has his ego. He sees this world in such a negative manner. But I thought, based on the trailer, they were going to take Brad in an interesting direction. Like, he was going to go on a nice personal journey where he sees that there is more to the world. That there is more good to the world. Like, you think the film is going to... Uh, really have him change by the end. Unfortunately, watching Brad's status and even looking back at Brad's status from the beginning of the film to the end, I really felt like Brad was the same character. And there's a couple of times where the movie gives you a hint where Brad could change. Especially a scene dealing with an orchestra. That's all I'm going to say as far as that goes. You think he's going to change. And then by the time the movie ends, nope, he still sees things the same. He's not happy. He doesn't seem to be very grateful for the wife that he has, which I can't believe because, like, shoot, Jenna Fisher and how nice she is, like her character, how nice she is. I bet anyone would be grateful to have a wife like that. And the fact that Brad didn't really acknowledge her as being a good wife or even feeling thankful, that's the thing. Brad is very, very selfish in this film, and he's so unlikable. And I know that's the point, but the, what I was hoping is that he's a person that starts off unlikable and then eventually he changes and no It's really from beginning to end and honestly as the movie keeps going and going and going I really start to dislike this character more and more like we're supposed to feel bad for him But for me at least I really did not feel bad for him in fact I actually felt bad for Michael Sheen, the person that he sees as his enemy. I actually felt more bad for him than I felt for Brad. Just all these things we see in Brad's point of view and what Brad thinks, it, uh, it, yeah, it was hard for me to really get into this film. And also, Ben Stiller has this narration, like, throughout this entire film. It's his narration of what he's thinking and all that. And at first, the narration wasn't anything bothersome. I liked the narration. But then, after a while, his narration just comes off as extremely repetitive. And we already get the point. He doesn't need to really narrate. We already know what he's seeing. We already know what he's feeling. Why do we need to have Ben Stiller's narration, or I should say Brad's narration, why do we need to have Brad's narration just shoved down our throats? Like I said, earlier with my positives. I like the score when it doesn't involve a violin because anytime you would hear this violin in the background of Brad's status, oh my word, it felt 
so out of place. You just hear this. Like, it did not work. It did not fit the movie. It did not fit really the tone in general. It just felt incredibly out of place. Overall, Brad's Status is a very disappointing movie. I really was looking forward to this film because I thought they were gonna do something interesting with the character of Brad. I thought maybe he would change as a person by the end. But by the end of the film, I really felt like I sat through Brad's Status for nothing. Brad is a selfish, arrogant person. I did not feel bad for him, but there's no doubt that Ben Stiller does give a terrific performance. I just wish his character was actually very well developed. Most of the movie honestly did bore me. I really was not all that engaged with this film, and at the end of the day, Brad's status just fell flat for me. I'm going to give Brad's status two out of four stars. I sadly didn't really care for this one. So you guys, in the comments down below, let me know what you think about Brad's status. This is 22 Tiger Dude here, and don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power.